hanging over not only this tournament, but all of hockey in Canada. And that is allegations of sexual abuse by Canadian hockey players, most prominently, but not exclusively, those representing our country, and how Hockey Canada has dealt with these critically important matters. Now, many Hockey Canada partners have put their relationship with the national governing hockey body on pause as a result. And TSN is the official broadcaster of both Hockey Canada as well as the International Ice Hockey Federation. We will be broadcasting three tournaments this month in August, the Holinka, the World Juniors, as well as the Women's Worlds in Denmark, even as many questions remain. Now, as these games go on, TSN will continue to what, do what we do and other media outlets have done, and that is shine a light into the corners of the Canadian hockey world in the hope it will contribute to making our national sport the better for it. We'd like to welcome in now the two individuals who will be calling all the games this week in Red Deer. Here's Gord Miller and Craig Button. Thank you, Laura. Look, it's clear that none of the players in the Holinka tournament and the World Junior or the Women's World Championship were involved in any of the allegations that are going on, but the Federation is. Hockey Canada is operating under a cloud. What are your thoughts? Well, regardless of your age or how you identify, hockey is something that everybody loves. But when you hear these types of allegations and what the cloud is with respect to what's happened, it's not a good place to be, and we have to find a place where everybody can enjoy fully, to the greatest extent, whatever your level is, the joys of hockey. And to make it a safe place. It's clear that two things are needed, truth and transparency. You need to be more of both. Dave Reed, what are your thoughts? Well, I also look at it as accountability. When I played and even when I coached young children in hockey, it was all about being accountable to yourself, about being accountable to your teammates. And that's where I look at Hockey Canada. Another thing with accountability is transparency. This is a huge brand, Hockey Canada. It touches everybody in, across the country. And if you have accountability and transparency, start, on, start at the top and it works its way down. Uh, we'll see how that all plays out. So, Dave, let's switch gears now and talk about the players we're going to be seeing here over the next week in Canada coming into Red Deer with a very talented group of players. Who sticks out to you here? Well, I'm going to start with a defenseman uh, on the back end, and that's uh, uh, Cameron Allen, number two. He was the OHL Rookie of the Year. As we're having a look at their lineup, there's a lot of offensive talent throughout this lineup, but I look at Cameron Allen on the back end and up front. I think Braden Yeager, who was the... WHL Rookie of the Year along with the CHL Rookie of the Year. These two players are dynamic. Allen with the Guelph Storm, the Toronto native, played with the Toronto Nationals, was dynamic on the power play, is a fantastic skater, will be a top first-round pick in the upcoming 2023 draft, and this is just the beginning for him. All the scouts can start ranking him. He'll dominate in the power play. He can dominate as a shutdown player in the neutral zone. The other side of Team Canada up front, I think the most of the offense is you're going to see it go through Braden. Jaeger. Jaeger had 34 goals and 59 points in 63 games with the Moose Jaw Warriors. An absolutely a, a shoot first, score mentality. And for Team Canada, they're going to need this in this tournament. They're going to need to get off to a quick start. And you're going to see, you're going to hear a lot about Braden Jaeger. You're going to hear a lot about Cameron Allen. These two guys, these two young men, will be first rounders in 2023. It just depends on how high they're going to rise. And this is the first tournament. This is the first look. The scouts are going to start ranking these guys. They knew who they are. Now it's time to start ranking them. Never too early to start to look ahead to the 2023 draft. Canada has won the most medals at this tournament with 26, won the most golds at this tournament with 22. So a dominant effort all around. We will see if that continues. The Canadians' first test here in Red Deer at this year's Holinka Gretzky Cup will be Switzerland as we take a look at the starting lineup. Diego Simeone returning for his second Holinka Gretzky Cup. He gets the nod in net tonight for the Swiss. He played in four games for Switzerland a year ago at this tournament. So yes, Canada's quest for gold medal number 23 at the Holinka Gretzky Cup officially starts in just moments. Puck drop is next from PD Mart Centrium in Red Deer, Alberta. Seven unique hybrid layers transforming the comfort and support of a standard spring or foam mattress delivering the perfect night's sleep. The Simba Hybrid Mattress. Shop in store at Sleep Country or shop online. Search Simba Sleep now. Anna stayed at this hotel and paid this price. Laura stayed in the same hotel and paid a lot less. How? Well, Anna found the hotel on her usual website. Laura used Trivago to compare offers from major booking sites and found a great deal. Hotel Trivago. Hey, 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 how you doing? 
Welcome to the Subway Eat Fresh Refresh. We got it. Cut. Introducing the new Green Goddess sandwiches. Popped with this delicious new Green Goddess dressing. Ooh, tangy. Cut. Subway Eat Fresh Refresh. Back here at Red Deer, day one, game three of the 2022 Olympic Gretzky. Cup, the under-18 tournament that kicks off the draft year for these players born in 2005, some even born in 2006 playing in this game. And the starting goaltender for Switzerland is 17-year-old Diego Simeone of the LBN Switzerland where he plays for the under-17 team there. Last year's tournament, a 918 save percentage. And the goaltender for Canada is 17-year-old Scott Retzlaff from Irma, Alberta, about three hours northeast of here. Plays for Seattle in the Western Hockey League. Head coach for Team Switzerland is Marcel Jenny. And for Canada, it is Stefan Julien, coaches Sherbrooke in the Quebec Major Junior League. One of his owners, Stefan Robida, just named assistant coach of the Montreal Canadiens. So Canada playing in a tournament for the first time since 2019. There was no 2020 event. Last year, Canada did not send a team to Europe due to travel restrictions. But a long history of success for Canada, where it can send most of its top players to this under-18 tournament. And thinking of free is Jordan, or is Ethan Goche, who plays for Stefan Julian in Sherbrooke. Moved in by Oliver Bach, the son of longtime NHL Erratic Bach. Former Ottawa Senator, first overall pick. Bonk goes back to place the London Knights of the Ontario Hockey League. We talked about development too, and London, he played a handful of games to get his feet wet. He wasn't right. ready to play at that level. They want him to be more ready. So let him season a little bit, but he'll be a full-time player for Dale Hunter in London this coming season. Played much of the year for St. Thomas, Junior A. That puck moves out of the reach of Matthew Wood and back down to the Swiss zone. It's always interesting how players pass go. You know, mm -hmm. Oliver Bonk, who was drafted by the Ottawa Senators. Radic Bonk, Bonk, excuse me. Oliver's the son. <laughs> Out of Las Vegas was where yeah. Radic came from. Las Vegas Thunder, the old IHL. His son comes up because of his father's placing in Ottawa. Canadian player now. Well, if you want to be developed as a defenseman, the London Knights, pretty good place to go. They've got a strong track record of turning out top-end NHL demon. Raphael Meyer plays that rink wide. He and his twin brother, Simone, playing on the same line for the Swiss. And the penalty coming to Canada in the early going. This was a concern for Coach Stefan Julian in Canada's pre-tournament game against the Finns on Friday night. They took a lot of penalties. And they take one here in the early going, a minute and a half in. That's a boarding call. Well, and you can see Stefan Julia, a minute and 32 into the first period, shaking his head. But one of the things, and this is part of it with the, a young group of players, number one, you got this lots of exuberance, but they also have lots of side scores. And so, you know, you want to assert and trying to find that line. That's clearly a play that should be penalized and off the face off play a quick chance there for Joe Pedrozini that's turned away in tight first good save for Scott Retzlaff Retzlaff plays for Seattle in the Western Hockey League and undefeated in his first 17 games in regulation and that shot knocked away by the blockers with two good chances in the early guard for Switzerland now knocked down shorthanded and brought up by Cody Barlow from Owen Sound Barlow in shoot scores shorthanded goal for Cody Barlow and Canada's got an early one Lead. Comes off of two great saves by Scott Ratzlaff on the on the power play for Switzerland, and then Colby Barlow, who set a record for the Owen Sound attack in the OHL for most goals by a rookie. But here's the one right off the faceoff, and you know Ratzlaff not only reads the play, but he pushes right out. Great position and makes a difficult save look easy, and then. Here comes Barlow, and Barlow's not even thinking about passing. He looks for his spot and buries it. 
just like he did in setting the Owens Sound rookie goal scoring record. Yeah, 30 and 59 games this year. He's one of three rookies in the Ontario League who hit the 30 goal mark this year. Pretty impressive. Barlow, a native of really Ontario. About an hour and a half north of Toronto. So a shorthanded goal in the early going as the Swiss still have more than 80 seconds to go on this power play. Ratzlaff left to pick it up. And Goche plays that to the line but not out. Kept alive by Tim Horak. And here's Horak back with it. Horak shoots. Hits a leg in front and bounces away. So if you're ranking the national tournaments by difficulty, the World Championship would be Switzerland's best chance with access to a wide range of ages. The World Junior Tougher when it's 17, 18, and 19 year olds. This tournament, which is open to players in 2005, very difficult for a country with a small player pool. Yeah, small player pool, but making strides forward. Yeah. And one of the areas where they're really making strides is that they're getting some bigger size players playing. And I'm not talking about six foot five players. I'm talking about players that aren't five foot seven across the board. See a lot more of the players that can handle the rigors and the challenges playing against the better countries. But Fazzini works in now for Switzerland. 15 seconds to go on their power play. And lifted up by Bonk. Dad Raddick played 969 NHL games. A hard guy to move off the puck. Yeah, he had weight and he had a real ability to force an opponent to push you off, to push him off if you could. Now Bonk fires that down. The play called icing as the penalty had expired. As Lichtensteiger touches up for Switzerland. So Canada has won 22 of the previous 30 Helenka Gretzky Cups, including 10 of the last 12 times that Canada has played. We mentioned Canada didn't play last year. This tournament has been a showcase for some of the greatest names we've heard from Canada over the years. Sidney sure. Crosby, Nathan McKinnon. You can go back to Jerome McGinley if you want to go back that far. I mean, unbelievable the quality of player. There have been a number of versions of this tournament. In the early days, there was one played in Mexico, another in Japan. Today, it's alternated between Canada, and then the other years, it's the Czechs and Slovakia co-hosting. There's a shot by Sage Weinstein, and that goes up and out of play. So for the Swiss, it is a tough task, but you know, you, you talk about the breakthroughs in recent years, Nico. You know, Nico Hischier, first overall in the NHL draft a couple of years ago. Roman Yossi, one of the top defensemen in the NHL. A lot of good young Swiss players in the league. Well, Kevin Fiala, who just was yeah. traded to the LA Kings, fantastic season with the Minnesota Wild previously. First rounder to Nashville, you have Timo Meyer. Terrific player in San Jose. Another high top 10 first round pick. You know, Nita Ryder. Yeah, just signed with Nashville. Their domestic league is strong. They really worked to try to get their young players playing in their league because, again, it was one of those leagues that was a haven for import players. <laughs> that pass bounces away from 50K. And icing called. Against the Swiss as Tanner Moldenbeck was back to pick it up for Canada. A lot of these Swiss players will play for multiple teams over the course of a season. So they'll play for their under 20, under 18, and under 17 team over the course of a season. Various tournaments and events. Thomas Sano back to pick it up. Plays it back around for Intikate. That was knocked away from him. On the forecheck aggressively is Braden Yeager. CHL Rookie of the Year last year. Tremendous year for Moose Jaw in the Western League. The only Moose Jaw 16-year-old ever to score 30 goals in a season. They said they've had some pretty good players go through Moose Jaw over the time. That's a good young team in Moose Jaw. In comes Molenbeek, shoots, it goes off a stick. 
Up and out of play, and among those here to watch is Mark Sam Laporte of the Montreal Canadiens, who I think is bigger now, like stronger than when he played. Um, won a couple of gold medals for Canada at the World Junior Championship in 93 and 94, with the captain in 94. And he was a big, strong, hard player. Like you talk about somebody that made playing against him difficult. That was Martin LaPointe. You think about the Detroit Red Wings through those years. You know, Chris Draper and Kirk Maltby and Martin LaPointe and Darren McCarty. I mean, they were instrumental in giving that team a real identity through their lineup. We know about Eisenman and Fedorov and how great they were in Lickstrom. Got a chance in front of the goal. That's knocked away from Zach Benson. Now brought back the other way. There's Horak with a shot. And the glove save made by Retzloff. And among the other groups here, every team's got a large contingent of scouts. On the left is... I think that's Tom Fajillism. Oh, sure. that was Andy Steiner. Oh, Andy Steiner. That's right. Yeah. In, the, in the middle of that group of the Edmonton Order scouts, Tyler Wright, that are gold medalist for Canada at the World Junior. 1993. The tournament was held here in 1995. Canada won the gold medal in this building. It was shared with Calgary and Edmonton. Also hosted some games. It was actually played all over Central Alberta as well. That was the last year of the street round robin format. Canada won the gold medal in the dressing room, watching Finland play Sweden in a game in Calgary. When that game wound up at a tie, Canada crunched the goal. The next year, the medal round format was brought into the, a true gold medal game. There's the captain, Cameron Allen, plays for Guelph in the Ontario League. Across he goes to Bonk. Allen was the OHL Rookie of the Year last year for Guelph. These players born in 2005. So in a couple years from now, they'll be the backbone of Canada's World Junior Team. A pile up in front of the Canadian goal as Reslap was knocked down. And that shot now with Reslap without a stick. Knocked that away on the shot by Raphael Meyer. 1-0 Canada leads here in the first period. cheesecake filling and drizzled with peanut butter sauce try our new dream donuts dreamt up from your favorite desserts it's time for new dream donuts it's time for tim's an air conditioner breakdown is unexpected but you can expect fast reliance service ask about our next day or we pay 500 dollars installation guarantee so act now for a great deal on a new air conditioner call our reliance Wing of bat and foot of crow. Eagle's egg and seagull's toe. Bits of wasp and ooze of fly. Soon I too can reach the sky. Mom, hmm? are you still busy cooking? Hmm. You are welcome to help me a bit, Freya. Oh, Mother, there's no helping you anymore. Don't you know? Hmm? Red Bull gives you wings. Hmm. Well, Scott Ratzlaff gets tied up in the crease area, but he never loses his focus or concentration. Play from behind the net. Just a collision there, but as Ratzlaff loses his stick, you can see his eye still on the play. Gets himself in the right position and just punches it out of play with his blocker. Terrific work by Ratzlaff there. Playing in his home area, not his hometown, but... All of the Red Deer Rebels. Now puck at the side of the goal. That bounced away and bumped back by Colby Barlow, who has the Canadian short-handed goal. Barlow plays that down to Denver Park. He has 11 Knights. 
Oh, back, back to pick it up is Sage Weinstein. This is Spokane Chiefs of the Western Hockey League. Native of Edmonton. Yeah, just up the road. And Cameron Allen flips that back down to the Swiss zone. Then on the kid and moves that back in. Drafted by the Halifax Mooseheads in the Quebec Major Junior League. Not related to Nathan McKinnon, who was a star for Halifax a decade ago. Is now a chance in scores. Rekop makes it 2 0. Carson Rekop on the breakaway snaps it by Simeone. First goal, second goal starts from just inside the Canada defensive blue line. And they move the puck into the middle of the ice. This one's a lob pass. Good play here by Cameron Allen to deny it. And Callum Ritchie just flips it up and over. Just a terrific play as Rekhoff takes it with his glove and gets it settled down in a nice little spot and buries it for a 2 0 lead. Rekhoff plays for Kitchener in the Ontario League at 18 goals this year, including a hat trick. The third youngest. Kitchener Ranger ever record a hat trick? The two players who were younger, Mike Richards and Jeff Just Skinner. Skinner. I was going to say, Jeff Skinner had to be one of them. Had to be. Two pretty good players. Yes. Well, on that play, too, Dave Reed was talking about what a complete player Cameron Allen is. He closes that play down perfectly. Callum Ritchie's in great position to support it and then zips it the other way. Just a terrific play. So here's the breakdown of the Canadian roster. 12 from the Western Hockey League, 6 from Ontario, 4 from the Quebec League, and 1 from the BC Junior League. That BC Junior League player is eligible to go to college should he so choose. Well, he stated that he's going to go. Matthew Wood, we're talking yeah. about, has stated that he's going to play at University of Connecticut this coming season. Place for Victoria, the BC Junior League. Now a chance and Jumping in there is Tanner Molendyke. And that ticks off the crossbar and goes out of play. And Matthew Wood played at the U18 tournament this previous April for Team Canada. So we'll explain this a time or two as you see the shot by Molendyke go up and out. But this is the beginning of the 2022-23 season. So for these players, this is the start of their draft year. The under-18 tournament that happens in the spring, the IHF tournament is kind of the, the postseason tournament for under 18s. These players are eligible to play in that, but for Canadians, a lot of them are playing in the junior playoffs. They won't be able to play in that tournament. Caden Price goes back to pick it up for the Kelowna Rockets of the Western Hockey League. That's another franchise that turns out great defensemen. Start with Shea Weber and <laughs> work from there. Another penalty coming here to Canada. That Callum Ritchie got a stick in. And tripping will be the call. He tried to plead his case, but Gord, I've seen a lot of players plead their case. I've never seen one win on appeal. Just hasn't happened. As you see Ritchie just leaning in and gets the skate of Paulie and Ritchie, the second overall pick in the OHL draft last year to the Oshawa Generals. Keep in, keep in mind when he got drafted, he hadn't played for just about 17 months. Right, like a lot of guys, yeah. right? So Switzerland on the power play here. Good stop in tape by Retzlaff. Another chance at the side of the goal. The initial shot was taken by Graf. But Retzlaff turns him away. When you're watching goaltenders, you want to see goaltenders that just have quiet feet, just a calm composure to their approach, you know, economy of movement. Watch Ratzlaff here, following the play, the head's there, moves across, doesn't overplay anything, understands where the puck is, just gets it all settled and stopped. And for a young goaltender, that's not common. Swiss had two good looks early on in the last power play, but then Canada scored a short hand goal. Here they come again, kicked ahead by Denver Barkey, and Barkey through the middle, Barlow again. Here he comes short hand and scores! Toby Barlow does it again, a second short hand goal here in the period. So we talked about Colby Barlow's goal scoring ability. Second short hand, he went great pass 
blocks by Denver Barkey. But watch these hands by Colby Barlow. He's in tight, and your hands have to be exceptionally fast. There's the kick of the puck to the stick. Now watch how quick your hands have to be when you get in that close to a goaltender. That's why Colby Barlow is such a good goal scorer. Callum Ritchie sitting in the penalty box. I, I gotta say, if you're Stefan Julian, get Barlow back out there for a, nat <laughs> for a natural hat trick shorthanded. <laughs> Who's ever done that? That, that, that's a great question. We have to get our ace over here, Ryan Moyer, to dig that one up. <laughs> I've I, I got to say, no one's ever had a natural hat trick with three short hand again. No, I, I, at any level. Yeah, I agree. Now Bond fires it back down. That's done free by Zach Benson. Matthew Catafor, who plays for Halifax in the Quebec League, trying to work that out of the corner. As the Swiss try to get going here in their power play, but Benson knocks that away. Mullenbeck plays for Saskatoon in the Western League. Pass it to Benson, and a great year for Winnipeg in the Western Hockey League this year. Benson plays it back to Bonk. So got Benson working in up was between the legs there. We saw Lucas San Luis, Marty San Luis' son. So Marty's a forward, his son's a D man. Bradley Fox was a forward, his son's a defenseman. Same thing. You wouldn't think forwards let their kids play D. Benson centers it. Quick chance, Coach E scores. Another short handed goal for Canada. Two on the same penalty. You know, Benson just works the puck below the goal line. But as you watch Ethan Gauthier, he has got outstanding hockey sense with the puck, without the puck. But just watch how Ethan Gauthier just slides over and gives himself the room. Benson's a target on the puck. Now watch Gauthier just slides in, gives Benson a target, and then finishes it perfectly all in one motion. Just a fantastic play. And as the goaltender tries to pick it up, Gauthier already has the puck behind him. And so that's four goals on seven shots. That'll be the end of the evening for Diego Simeone. Ivan Hue comes in now for the Swiss. Well, I don't know how you can blame Simeone for any of this. This is, I mean, we're talking about breakaway goals in a bang-bang play that you have no chance on. I mean, that's three breakaway goals right. and a bang-bang play. I would suggest that maybe they shouldn't play the power play unit anymore, giving up three so far this first period. Well, I know Stefan Julian might have been concerned about penalty killing, but with three goals shorthanded, <laughs> maybe it's a different type of an attack. Final second now, this Swiss power play, which has been a nightmare. <laughs> and picked up by Braden Yeager. Each time the top offensive players finally get in the ice for Canada with all the penalty killing going on. 9.27 remaining here in the first period. Canada has three shorthanded goals. Your most life-changing sleep is about what's underneath. Only Casper mattresses align your spine to eliminate aches and pains with 86 supportive gel pods. Get up to $500 towards a mattress at casper.ca or a sleep country near you. Playing keeps us young. It takes us on adventures. And it keeps us dreaming of that one perfect shot. Whatever your reason, come out and play. When pain says you can't, fight it two ways with new Advil Plus Acetaminophen. Ibuprofen targets pain. Acetaminophen blocks pain signals. New Advil Plus Acetaminophen fights pain for up to eight hours. Finally, there's Alien Tape, a revolutionary new tape that doesn't use adhesive, but strong enough to hold an incredible 17 and a half pounds on most surfaces. You'll love Alien Tape, the incredible new advanced grip technology tape that instantly locks anything into place without screws or anchors. Go online to get your roll of the incredible Alien Tape for the low, low price of $19.99. That's almost 21 feet of Alien Tape for $19.99. 
Don't delay. Get yours today. Good careers lead in management. George McPhee, a Hobie Baker winner at Bowling Green State University, is the top player in U.S. college, now a longtime NHL General Manager Executive, there's Steve Eisman talking to Chris Draper. Eisman, of course, the Hall of Fame player, GM in Tampa and now Detroit. And Jason Spezza just retired. Now on the hockey operations staff for the Toronto Maple Leafs, grinding it out, as you'd expect he would. Well, we were talking between games, and you talked about what a hockey junkie Jason Spezza is. Richie plays that rink wide. Center pass score. Braden Yeager, and it's 5-0. What a pass here by Rakoff and Jaeger going right to the net with the stick down. Welcome to the game, Ewan Hue. Ewan Hue, the son of longtime international goaltender and NHL goalie, Cristobal Hue. There's the play, and he just goes right back and tap, tap, 5 nothing, just like that. Callum Ritchie, Rakoff, Jaeger. Two assists so far now for Callum Ritchie. Everybody's getting in on the fun. This is a very talented Canadian group. I know at the selection camp prior to this, 41 kids. One kid was hurt. Bo Aki wasn't able to fully participate and show what he's capable of. But pretty easy to see that this was going to be a group of players that they were going to select that were very talented. And now Canada's going to the power play as Maurice Pauly goes off for a trip. So the Canadians with three shorthanded goals to their credit will now get the goal of the man advantage. Well, you were talking about the skill that they have. Well, that skill is going to pop out here on the ice. Now, we saw Ethan Gauthier score the shorthanded goal. Ethan Gauthier is just a well-rounded, competitive two-way center. Power play, penalty killing, with the puck, without the puck. First overall pick in the Quebec Major Junior League draft a couple years ago. Turn the eight of Benson. Here's Benson with it. Oh, great cross ice pass. Back in front, score. Gauthier, the tap in on the pass from the corner by Riley Height. That took 14 seconds on the power play, and it's six to nothing. Yeah, it's the skill level is so significant. You talk about how they worked it. I mean, Zach Benson makes a perfect pass through sticks, under skates, right on the stick of Riley Height. And then you watch how Ethan Goche quickly turns around to get that pass, just redirects it into the wide open net. And now Marcel Jenny, the Swiss coach, has called timeout to try to stop the bleeding. As the roof is caved in here, 8.49 to go. You think about this Canadian roster, no Connor Bedard, of course, like we play in the World Junior next <laughs> yeah. week, so imagine how good he'd, they'd be with him. Yeah, I think they'd be really good with him. They're really good without him. <laughs> Five goals for Canada in three minutes and 42 seconds. Canada will play Slovakia on Tuesday, then wrap up the round robin against Sweden on Wednesday. The two pools of four teams. Top two in each group advance to the semifinals. In the first game today, Czechs and Finns played a wild one. Czechs took a early 2 0 lead. Finns had a 3 2 lead in the third. Czechs tied it up. It went to overtime, then a shootout. And in the shootout, the Czechs changed goaltender. <laughs> Tanner Howe works it across to Wood. Matthew Wood, 45 goals in 46 games for Victoria in the BC Junior League this year. Not surprisingly, he was the rookie of the year in that league. Hey, Zell, that tends to work hand in hand. Score lots of goals as a rookie and then be named rookie of the year. Turned away by Retzlaff. And brought up by Wood. And it was Nanaimo, B.C. Wood works it in. 
Wood in the corner. Looking for Jaeger. Will make his way off. Back at the point is McKinnon. We mentioned McKinnon is not related to Nathan McKinnon. McKinnon was drafted by Nathan McKinnon's old junior team, the Halifax Mooseheads, who also drafted a player named Crosby. <laughs> that one's from New Brunswick. Yeah. Break off. Back in the corner for Lynn and a quick shot by Richie. Ripped that wide. Here's McKinnon back with it. Canada has six goals on nine shots. Long shot by Rakoff. And the save is made by Yuan Hue. So let's take you back to the first game of the day here. We mentioned it was 3-3 into overtime. So in the shootout, the Czech goaltender Rabal was pulled. They put in Adam Dibal. He makes one save. He stopped the only shot he faced. The Czechs score and win the game. That's unusual. <laughs> yes, it is. Gets credit for the win in the shootout. Making one save. Timing is everything, my friend. Ronnie Height puts that wide. And now held the line by Allen. Long shot. Drifts wide as Cameron Allen got down on goal. Weinstein. Plays it back across. Allen couldn't pull the trigger. His centering pass. Goes to Barkey. Goes back, icing waved off as Allen gathers it back up. Native of Toronto, the third overall pick in last year's OHL draft. And wearing the C for Canada in this tournament. Pivots back and knocked off stride. He's the youngest defenseman, Allen, to have a hat trick in the Ontario League in the last 25 years. That play is called offside at the Canadian line. They had a young team in Guelph. And, you know, George Burnett, now the current GM, but he was the coach there. He really was patient with the young players in Guelph. And, you know, he knew that as you're coming in, and again, Cameron Allen hadn't played for a long stretch of time, over a year. And a lot of other players like that, he was really patient with their development. Added a couple of overage or a couple of older players. That team's going to be a real force to be reckoned with. Scott Walker now taking over as the head coach. Jordan Turney got rattled a moment ago, but pivots back with the puck. Thanks for Shawinigan in the Quebec Major Junior League. They won the league title this year for the first time at the Memorial Cup. A battle for the rolling puck, and it's picked up by California. Also plays for Halifax in the Quebec League. Halifax and Moncton will be the host cities for the upcoming World Junior Championship, the 2023 tournament that will take place at its normal slot over the holidays. Back there for the first time in some 20 years. Simone Meyer. Banks at the center ice. Playing a hit by Molendijk. Barlow to Meyer shoots and a save made by UA. We'll be calling UA saves for a long time again. And that hard shot taken there by Barlow looking for his third of the game. But UA makes the stop. Ethan Goche, the native of Drummondville, Quebec, has one of the Canadian goals and a 6 0 lead here in the first period. Hey, can I get the two for eight mix and match with a Whopper and a second Whopper? No, with the new Chipotle original chicken sandwich. No, with two Chipotle. Now mix and match two sandwiches for just eight dollars, only at Burger King. Can you more that? No. Yes. Your most life-changing sleep is about what's underneath. This is a Casper mattress. Inside, precisely 1,501 perforations create a cooling system so effective you won't be awake to notice. 
only Casper mattresses are made with 86 supportive gel pods to align your spine and eliminate aches and pains. It's the cooling, supportive comfort you need for the most refreshed feeling each morning. Get up to $500 towards a mattress at casper.ca or a sleep country near you. Slim and Clear 2.0. We're here for those who don't just do things, but who make them 2.0. Those who don't just play, but really go for it. And when they get together, they take it to the next level. Because why not make it 2.0? Crisp, light-tasting, Sleeming Clear 2.0 has 80 calories and 2 grams of carbs. Why not make it 2.0? On the left is Oliver Falk. On the right is Dad Raddick. Look at those wrists and hands. <laughs> he, he was thick. You know, you think about playing in the IHL as a 7th year old player, and that's that's what Raddick did. And that was a league with lots of experience and a lot of older players. And I mean, he went in there and he competed and played hard and played well. Ultimately, ended up being the third overall pick in that draft. McKinnon shoots that deflected away, made the stop on that. Still loose at the sound of the goal as Tanner Howe tried to center it. Barlow. The Molendijk walking in. He's knocked down. Penalty coming to Switzerland. And it's touched up by Nino Niederman. Canada's going back to the power play. As they'll call a hooking penalty against Valdemar Hall of Switzerland. Well, we've seen the power play click one for one. Nice play here by Molendijk, though. Attacking into the middle of the ice, attacking where you force opponents to have to defend you. If you go outside, they can just let you go there, but Molendijk takes the initiative inside and draws the penalty. Jaeger sends that rink wide to Wood. Matthew Wood. Plays that back to Molendijk. Across he goes, Jaeger. Look at the line for the moment by Molendijk. Molendijk tees it up and shoots. That goes wide. Andrew Crystal out there in his Canadian power play. Plays for Kelowna of the Western Hockey League. And that pass is intercepted by Guillaume Kayser. There's Wood with it. Matthew Wood. Drew for Ritchie. Up for Crystal. They have a Burnaby, BC. And another penalty coming to Switzerland. And this time it's going to be a boarding call. So Canada, a two man advantage for a minute and 13 seconds. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought this was just a really good body on body contact with Andrew Crystal, the Czech player. I mean, it's right on the shoulder there. Yeah, he, he loses his balance or anything, but you see right here, he comes right in on the shoulder, takes a lean down. That's not a penalty, in my view. He's far away from the boards. He knows the contact is coming. Face off one back to Allen. So Canada at five on three for a minute and ten seconds. Wood plays it back across to Jaeger. In comes Jaeger across. He goes and the shot cued wide by Benson. Lots of firepower on the ice for Canada now. Allen. Works it back down to Benson. Now Benson works it back across to Allen. Down for Jaeger. In for Wood. Shoot scores! Matthew Wood. Five on three goal. And it's 7 nothing. And the Canadians will now just go back to center ice. There'll be no more fly by the bench to show some respect for their opponent. And Matthew Wood gets this puck in the slot and literally sizes it right up and then just overpowers UA. Canada really moving the puck around nicely. Benson swings it over to Allen, then it comes right over to Allen, and there's the great opportunity by Wood. Stepping right into it. Allen gives him enough time and room to deal with it. Deal with it, he does.
So Ken remains on the power play for a minute and 25 seconds. Riley Height from Prince George of the Western League was the second overall pick in the 2020 Western League draft. Remember, the, the Western League teams draft Bantam players, whereas the OHL and Quebec, and the Quebec League draft 16-year-olds. Mullenbeck back for it. Into the McBride, B.C. Up ahead for Crystal. Now Lindemann comes in and Mullenbeck knocked him off the puck. Riley Height into a Saskatoon up for Wood. In comes Wood setting things up now with 35 seconds to go on this Canadian power play. Turn yet. Back in for Wood, winds the wind, comes with a cross, Crystal with a shot, saved by UA. And now Crystal banks it off UA and in, or did he? Well, the referee has his hands up the saying... The referee's saying no goal. Then he puts his hand up to say, wait a second, maybe we should check on this. Andrew Crystal is celebrating. There is video review here, and no, it is a goal. There is video review, but no coach's challenge. Oh, what a nice play by Andrew Crystal. <laughs> the one the referee didn't see. Yeah, while the puck comes right back to him, and he banks it right in off the backside of Huey. Quick thinking, Andrew Crystal. Huey makes the first save, but right in off the pads. Mind quickness by Andrew Crystal. Commission native of Burnaby was the eighth overall pick in the 2020 Western League Bantam Draft. Had a fantastic season last year in Kelowna. A number of these players here, Braden Yeager, Zach Benson, Riley Height. You know, you just talk about Andrew Crystal. I don't have to mention Connor Bedard. He's not here. But all 05 boards were really, really prominent, significant players for their respective teams as 16-year-olds last year in the Western Hockey League. Here they come again, as Howe moves in, inside two to go in the opening period. And Tanner Howe was as well, playing in Regina with Connor Bedard. He's not eligible until the 2024 NHL draft because of his birthday after September 15th. Bernier drops it back, and that's fired on goal by Barlow. Cleared away by UA. Back goes Tournier for it, and he gets there in time as icing is called against the Swiss. Well, we can go back in time. We've talked about the players. There's Jeff O'Neill. The Pacific Cup, that was the one over in Japan. Yeah. Jeff O'Neill. And there's Rick Nash. Six Nations Cup in 01 before moving on to an NHL career. And there's Nick Suzuki. Now starring in the NHL with the Montreal Canadiens. This is called the memory of Ivan Holinka tournament in honor of the legendary Czech player and coach. And in 2018, it became the Holinka Gretzky Cup as Canada shared the tournament with Slovakia and Czechia. Next year, we'll be back in Czechia and Slovakia. A great rink in Brooklyn, where you are the mayor. <laughs> You run the pizza joint down the street. And they have the great gelato, too. They do. <laughs> I got to say, I got to say, you know, you don't really think of gelato in the Czech Republic, but I got to check you, sorry, but yeah. Well, they make it in big pans, and I'll tell you what, one time a few years back, I tried to get it back, and I said I'd get somebody some ice cream, but it was too hot, so I had to eat both of them. Yeah. Well, give, give, give. <laughs> Sacrifices yeah. one has to make. I and the say, pizza is really good. I was going to say, by the end of that tournament, we were going to have to run back to Bratislava, which is about an hour and a half drive away. You and UA's dad was a terrific NHL goalie, longtime international for France. For a long time, the best known Swiss players were goalies. Shot by Benson, fired wide. Allen. Lays that down to Catapult. And still loose in the corner. Shots are 18-4 Canada, but eight goals on the 18 shots. 
Chance for the Swiss almost a two on one, but Allen breaks it up and plays it back to the Swiss line. Brought in by Weinstein, centers it, and Bitson couldn't quite reach that as UA pounces on it. Next up for Canada will be Tuesday as they take on Slovakia at 9 Eastern, 7 o'clock local time. And what a year last year was for Slovakia on so many levels. Beginning with this tournament. Beginning with this tournament, silver medal last year. Even though, you know, you'd say Canada wasn't there, but they've never done much before. They beat some good teams. Then they win the Olympic gold medal. Pretty good world championship for them. And then the top two players in the NHL draft and three in the first round. This first period is all Canada, a 8 nothing lead after the opening 20 minutes. You're watching the 2022 Lincoln Gretzky Cup from Red Deer, Alberta on TSN. Our first intermission is coming up. How fast does Dove Dry Spray actually dry? Dry Spray dries in an instant, leaving these men with nothing to do in this ad. Thankfully, we've got something to fill the time, instantly putting these guys back into their comfort zone. Dove Dry Spray dries instantly and keeps you protected for 48 hours. Password. New Watermelon Bubbly. Password, new watermelon bouble. There it is. Welcome to the party. New watermelon bouble. It's proudly here for a short time, but a great time. Playing keeps us young. It takes us on adventures. And it keeps us dreaming of that one perfect shot. Whatever your reason, come out and play. summer it's when we try new things like inviting new friends into old traditions because when two teams meet it's time to gather around i am i am i am i am invictus and discover invictus platinum fragrances by paco raban <laughs> What you reading? Oh, nothing. It's called Love, Lock, and Cluster. Basically, I love it. It's called Love, Lock, and Cluster. It's an e-book. Love, Lock, and Cluster. It's called Love, Lock, and Cluster. 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 It's this amazing new e-book I got on Kobo Plus. Whatever e-books you're into, read them all for $9.99 a month. Sleaming Clear 2.0. We're here for those who don't just do things, but who make them 2.0. Those who don't just play, but really go for it. And when they get together, they take it to the next level. Because why not make it 2.0? Crisp, light-tasting Sleaming Clear 2.0 has 80 calories and 2 grams of carbs. Why not make it 2.0? Special first period and special teams, the big difference for Team Canada. Three shorthanded goals, three power play goals. Kobe Barlow had two of those shorties, and here he is with Ford. Kobe, you had one shorthanded goal this season for Owen Sound in the playoffs, I should point out. So two shorthanded goals in the first period couldn't have been what you were expecting. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it started off with a great kill, great face-offs, get the puck out, and a couple good bounces, and that went our way, and ended up in two goals. So this team has been together for a couple of weeks. What are you seeing from this group? Yeah, it's a special group here. I mean, every single player is, you know, equal in talent. We all work hard, and we came together in a short two weeks, and we're here to win a gold medal. I don't know if you look around, but there's a couple of hundred NHL people here. How much are you thinking about your draft year? Uh, yeah, I would be lying to you if it's not in the back of my head, but, you know, just taking every shift, uh, one shift at a time, and working hard is all you can do. Thanks very much. Thank you. 
Well, quite the first period for Team Canada. Eight nothing. Yes, eight nothing over Switzerland. Dave and Laura here with you as our intermission is officially underway. We've seen with the U18 teams with Canada kind of a theme. Back in April, they were taking a lot of penalties, undisciplined. I'm in working hard. It's all you can do. Thanks very much. Thank you. Well, quite the first period for Team Canada. Eight nothing. Yes, eight nothing over Switzerland. Dave and Laura here with you as our intermission is officially underway. We've seen with the U18 teams with Canada kind of a theme. Back in April, they were taking a lot of penalties, undisciplined play. We saw in the pre tournament game against Finland some of the same bad habits creeping. I'm in working hard. It's all you can do. Thanks very much. Thank you. Well, quite the first period for Team Canada. Eight nothing. Yes, eight nothing over Switzerland. Dave and Laura here with you as our intermission is officially underway. We've seen with the U18 teams with Canada kind of a theme. Back in April, they were taking a lot of penalties, undisciplined play. We saw in the pre tournament game against Finland some of the same bad habits creeping up.